Hi everybody, in this tutorial I want to show you how to add some style to your websites to make them look a little bit more appealing. And so um, here I have logged into glitch.com and you can either go back into your project by uh, going into your edit here or I'm just going to click this button that says resume coding and it's going to open my most recent project. And here I've got my website with all the HTML tags and some content here. I've got some attributes and values that I've added to add a little bit of style. And I can go ahead and show this in a new window just so I can kind of see what it looks like as I'm working. Now, what we're going to work on today is, is a language called CSS. You'll notice that in this line, number uh, 11, it is linking to what's called a style sheet. Uh, this CSS means it's a language that's called Cascading Style Sheet. That's what CSS stands for. And when connected to an HTML page, it allows us to make rules that will apply uh, and that will add properties and values to all of our tags that will allow us to add some style around them. And so you'll notice that when I click on this, code, this file here, style.css, uh, it's given me some style code that I could start out with. So first off, it's saying, hey, go find the body tag. And in that body tag with these curly brackets, it's, it's, it's going to make some rules. Okay, So the first rule is when you see a font family, any font family is going to first be Helvetica. If they don't have Helvetica on their system, then go to Arial. If that computer doesn't have Arial, then find any sans serif that will work. The next one is that it's going to give um, two EMs, which is a measurement of margin around the body as well. So everything in these curly brackets is a rule that's applied to the body tag. Now same with the H1, that might be a little bit easier to understand. When it finds the H1 tag, it's going to add a font style of italic and it's gonna give it a certain color and a hexadecimal code. So that when we look at the project, it really is this color. So if I wanna change this you know, font style, this color of the font, to white, I could do FF, 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 and now this color will be white. But not only that, every single time I have an H1, so if I had multiple H1s, any time it sees H1 now, because it's a rule in my CSS, my cascading style sheet, it's going to always be white. So every time I add an H1, it will be white. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take some CSS code that I will give you and I want you to paste it into your actual project. Okay, so I'm going to go into my site, copy this, and this is the code that I will give you that I would like for you to start adding to your HTML page. When it asks for a color in your body, this allows you to choose not the background color but the font color. So every time it sees any kind of text, it will be, let's just say, red for now. Now, in the body, when it sees a background, when it sees the body, we're going to give it a background color of FF, 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 which is the color white. So now when I look at my site, it will be a white background with red lettering. Um, I can choose a font family, so I might go with Helvetica, comma, Arial, comma, Sans, serif. Now you can choose any font that you want, but understand that the person must have that installed on their site. So if you download a font from fontsquirrel.com or defont.com or wherever and install it on your system and it works for you, it may not work for them. So you want to use what's called a web safe font, which is our, the most common fonts that you might see. I would always stick with Helvetica, Arial, uh, those kinds of fonts. Now when it's asking for font size, let's just go with 10px for now, I'm sorry, yeah, 12px for now. So now when I click here, all of my text is 12 pixels, uh, it, it, and, and, and I can continue to add those to my H1s. Say I wanted my font size for my H1 to be, let's say, um, 48 pixels. I want my font style to be italic. And then I want my font weight to be 400. 
And now um, my font decoration, text decoration to be none. So it's gonna ask, do I want it to have an underline or anything like that? Now these values that I'm adding um, are, are unique to each property. So the fact that I've got the property here means that there are certain values that will fit here. In other examples, like before I deleted this, you saw the EM, that's a different type of measurement than pixels. Um, and so it does take a little bit of time to understand what all of those um, definitions will be. But hopefully you'll kind of get the, the idea that as you add this CSS code, it is changing every time it sees that item in your HTML page. Now paragraph, you can guess what that is, and then A. Now A's are our links, right? So the link here is the A tag. It's an A, if I look into my index page, it starts with the A tag. Okay, so when I go into my style sheet and it's saying A, it's saying, okay, what color do you want your links to be? And so if I want my link to be a different color, which blue is fine, but I'm gonna go ahead and just make it, I'm gonna guess, guess a number here. Um, I don't know what this is at all, but I'm gonna go click on here and there it is, it's pink. Okay, and then text decoration will be underlined. Okay, so now my links are going to be a certain color and they will be underlined. Now, a visited means what color will it be once they've already visited the link? And I'm fine if you just kind of leave that the same color. Now, once they've visited it, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it to be underlined. That's fine, I don't mind if that's underlined. Uh, while it's active, what that means is what happens when they click on it. As they're clicking on the link, I'm just going to go ahead and say none. And then hover, what happens when they hover over it? Let's go ahead and make it a gray color when they hover over it. I'm just going to do a CC, 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 and that's a gray color. And then I'm going to do a none as well. So now that I've added those CSS properties and values, I can go back here and see that when I hover over it, it's gray and the underline is gone. And you can see that here, as I hover over it, the color is gray and the underline is gone, text decoration none. Now these rules will apply to anything that you add. So if I wanted, if I had a table and I wanted to do something with that, all I would have to do is type in the word table and then add these brackets and then do things like, you know, a margin of 10 pixels. That would add 10 pixels of margin on the top, right, bottom, and left. If I wanted all of my images to have a certain margin, I could do IMG because that's the tag for images, and I could say margin 20 pixels. So now it's gonna have a pixel margin of 20 on the top, right, bottom, and left. And when I click over here, if, if I had text around this, you would see that there's actually a margin around this. So the idea here is to understand that CSS works with HTML, the items here at the top are going to be the tag in HTML, and then everything in between these brackets will be all the rules that you're applying for each of those items. Now you'll notice that the property is in pink and the value is in either blue or some kind of shade of blue here, and it's gonna end with a semicolon. And um, that is just some of the syntax that you'll have to understand with CSS is that it starts with a colon, it ends in a semicolon. Now this is a totally new language. It is different from HTML, but it works with HTML. I don't expect you to know everything about CSS, but what I want you to do is take this code and paste it into your CSS, your style sheet here, and just start um, experimenting with at least the code that I've given you and start customizing it a little bit to make the colors and the paddings and, and the items that I've given you to um, customize it to however you want your site to look.